This is important to know because higher fiber content will let you eat carbs without severe spikes in your blood sugar. What else? Well, sugary drinks, high fructose content might actually cause. How do you know there are actually trans fats in a product? Today, we are talking about the 10 worst foods that will make diabetes control near impossible. And if you avoid them, diabetes management will be a whole lot easier. Let's get into it. I'm Dr. Ahmed Ergin, your endocrinologist, your diabetes specialist on YouTube, and for some of you in real life. Like you know, diabetes has reached pandemic proportions as a current condition. And yes, diet has a lot to do with it, if not all. Da da, it's news to you, right? But hey, you'll hear some good information on this video, so stick around. I'll give you a nice tip at the end, so you will love it at the end of this video if you keep watching. In addition to heart disease, kidney disease, and blindness, uncontrolled diabetes has a bunch of ugly consequences. So why are we concerned with these foods? They're delicious, right? Why not just enjoy our life? Well, because of their effect on your raising your blood sugar and the insulin levels, causing a lot of inflammation in your body and increasing your risk of disease. So not just diabetes, but a whole lot more disorders such as heart disease, cancer, etc. In other words, if you keep eating these, you will enjoy your life, but it's not going to last too long, or you may be living your life in pain and suffering if you end up with diseases such as diabetes or chronic conditions that I talked about. So don't worry though, I am not here to tell you to quit everything that you love or to say everything is bad for you. I'm just going to open your eyes to the horrible foods that you may be eating and thinking that they're actually good for you. And yes, a lot of good foods people with diabetes or pre-diabetes should steer clear. And I'm going to talk about 10 of them today. And yes, if you do so, I think you'll be good to go. So when it comes to those with diabetes, why is carbohydrate intake is so important, right? Think about the, the macronutrients such as carbohydrates, protein, and fat that gives you the energy. Well, carbohydrates by far the most detrimental to your blood sugar levels, like you know. That's because they are pretty much absorbed to your bloodstream, you know, they're broken down no matter what, what it is, sugar or carb. I'm not saying the carbs are evil here, I'm just saying they're also an important part of your diet, but you have to... Be careful about what type of carbs you consume. Starches, sugar, fiber, they're all carbs. But fiber, on the other hand, is not even digestible and it slows down the absorption in your body. So it doesn't raise your blood sugar as much. So actually, they'll slow down the absorption so any other sugar or carb you're eating will be better handled by your body. Because your pancreas will have the time to deal with it if you have fiber in your diet. But that doesn't happen really when you eat cereal because there's no fiber in there. In order to find out the digestible carbs in a serving, you need to subtract the fibers from the total carb. If a cup of mixed vegetable, for example, has 10 grams of carbs and 4 grams of fiber, the net carb will only be 6 grams. This is important to know because higher fiber content will let you eat carbs without severe spikes in your blood sugar. Despite that, blood sugars might still spike pretty severely if you eat too many of the carbs, even if there's a lot of fiber in them. Now, beverages sweetened with sugar and people with diabetes should definitely avoid these. We'll get into more detail, but I'll tell you, 12 ounce of can of cola, for example, has 40 grams of carbs, making them extremely high in sugar. And since most diabetics are sticking to like 30 to 40 or 50 grams of carbs at max per meal, depending on their gender and activity level, but 40 grams in a beverage is a lot. So another example of a sugar sweetened beverage like iced tea and lemonade has around 45 grams of carbs, a piece, a, a cup or something. Eight ounces of soda, for example, or an apple juice has 25 grams of carbs. So most of these are loaded with fructose syrup, which is linked to insulin resistance and diabetes. The studies actually suggest that people who consume these sugary beverages, their risk of diabetes increase, but also their fatty liver disease risk increases. On the other hand, drinking water with a wedge of lemon, which has only one gram of carb, is practically calorie free and is a far better superior option. 
What else? Well, sugary drinks, high fructose content might actually cause belly fat that you don't want to have. They raise your cholesterol, they raise your triglyceride levels. All of these can be super dangerous. A diet including, for example, 25% of calories from high fructose beverages increases your insulin resistance and belly fat increase and metabolic rate will go down and eventually you will develop obesity and diabetes. It's best to avoid the sugary drinks all together in order to keep your blood sugar levels under control and lower the risk of pretty much any disease that you can think of. Number two in the list is trans fats. So trans fats are pretty much made synthetically and super harmful. They're made by stabilizing the unsaturated fatty acids with hydrogen, like margarine, peanut butter spreads, creamers, frozen dinners, all includes trans fats. And the manufacturers of baked goods, such as like the crackers or muffins makers, they typically add preservatives to help increase the shelf life of their product. And in spite of the fact that the trans fats don't directly increase your blood sugar levels, they have been associated with increased inflammation, insulin resistance, and belly fat, as well as lower HDL cholesterol levels and cardiovascular risk increase, and, you know, of course, diabetes. So, how do you know there are actually trans fats in a product? Well, if a product label says partially hydrogenated in the ingredient list, you should avoid that. Number three white pasta, white rice, and white bread. So all those whites, processed foods, they are high in glycemic index. So people with type 1 and type 2 diabetes, if their blood sugars are already high, they should definitely avoid eating bread, bagels, and all the refined flour products. This isn't limited to refined white flour-based items. The researchers actually found that the, even the gluten-free pasta, etc., they raise up your blood sugars and so forth. Another study, for example, indicated that people with type 2 diabetes and mental disabilities had actually a lower brain function after eating foods high in carbs. So if you're not feeling so sharp today after eating your beloved white bread, now you know why. When someone is not so sharp, they actually call them breadhead, literally in my country, in Turkey, where I used to live. So, fiber content of these foods are extremely low and as you know, the fiber reduces the risk of blood sugar spikes, etc. Now, interestingly, Italians and Italy, they make things a little differently than what we do in USA here. They use high fiber content in their food, they use olive oil, and they actually move their booties. So, they burn it off. I think they don't even have drive throughs so you figure it out. As you must know by now, the Swapping out low fiber foods with the high fiber ones will lower your blood sugars for sure. Diabetics will also see a drop in their cholesterol as the fiber binds the cholesterol and as a result the insulin resistance goes down. What else does high fiber content do? Well, it improves your gut flora which is extremely important for your overall health. The next one that is bad for you is yogurt with fruit flavors. Well, people with diabetes may benefit from yogurt. A completely different story unfolds when it comes to fruit flavored variations. In general, flavored yogurts are manufactured with non-fat or low-fat milk and contain significant amount of carbs and sugar. Approximately like 60% of calories in one cup of a serving of a fruit flavored yogurt come from sugar. Isn't that crazy? I'd rather stick with my high-fat plain creamy Greek yogurt and guess what? Faye is my favorite brand. It's super creamy. Here's another thing. Frozen yogurt is viewed as a healthier alternative to ice cream by many people. However, it is possible that it contains as much sugar as ice cream, if not more. So don't get deceived there. I would say choose plain whole milk yogurt instead of high sugar flavored yogurts that can spike your blood sugar and insulin and can harm everything that you're dealing with, your cholesterol, diabetes, and, and even your guts. So. Plain whole milk contains a lot less sugar, although it has some natural carbs, but it's a lot better than the flavored ones. The next one in the list, which is the fifth one, is breakfast cereals with added sugar. So if you have diabetes, starting your day with cereal is one of the worst things you can do. No matter how good for you they claim to be, most cereals are loaded with sugar and carbs. 
They also supply very little protein, which is a nutrient can help you feel full and satisfied for a long time and help maintain the stable blood sugar levels throughout the day. For diabetics, even healthy breakfast cereals are not the best option. So stay clear of that. For example, granola has 44 grams of carbs in a half cup of serving and also each serving contains no more than 7 grams of protein. So most cereals should be avoided in favor of protein-based low-carb breakfast to help manage the blood sugar and curb your appetite. So we have a best breakfast video, so I would say watch that one after this one. Number six, coffee drinks with flavorings. Now, a lower risk of diabetes has been associated with drinking coffee. Don't get me wrong. You may know this if you have watched our other video about the coffee and diabetes. But fancy coffee drinks, on the other hand, like the ones you get in the almighty Starbucks store, should be seen as a liquid dessert rather than a nutritious drink. The brain does not handle liquid also as well as solid foods. So when you consume calories through beverages, you do not make up for it by eating less later, which could result in weight gain. So do not get your calories through liquids. Carbohydrates are a lot in those flavored coffee drinks. I'll give you an example. Starbucks, for example, a 16 ounce of caramel macchiato, which is around 500 cc, has around 60 grams of carbs, whereas the blonde vanilla latte has around 30 grams of carbs in the same serving size. I would say choose regular coffee or espresso with a tablespoon of heavy cream or half and half to keep your blood sugar under control and prevent the weight gain. But remember, when you have diabetes, you need to account for small blood sugar rise due to caffeine in the coffee that may raise your adrenaline, especially in the mornings. Number seven, maple syrup, honey, or agave nectar. These are almost as bad as white table sugar and like candies or cookies that are all pretty much the same. They are different type of sugar, but they're all sugar and they will raise your blood sugar. So they are all examples of natural sugars and they do not really have a lot of fiber. So they're not like processed white sugars, they're a little bit better, but they're still significantly spike your blood sugar, so stay clear of them. Number eight, dried fruits and berries. Now, fruits and berries are fine, right? But a different story with the dried ones. So vitamin C, potassium, all this good stuff that comes, vitamins and minerals and antioxidants with the fruits are great. But the dried fruits has a concentration of these nutrients, and since the water is removed, everything becomes more concentrated. Well, that also means that the sugar concentration increases in them as well. For example, grapes will include 27 grams per cup with, you know, a little fiber in there, but one cup of raisins with the same thing, or dried, 145 grams. So that's drastically different. So you really have to wash out your portion if you are eating dried fruits, and if you cannot wash your portion, just not worth it, don't eat it at all. I mean, the raisins have four times as much carbs as grapes. Think about that. This is crazy. The carb content of some of the other dried fruits also higher than the regular fresh fruits, so stick with your fresh fruits if I were you. Eating like fresh berries or a little eppers and pears and oranges with minimal sugar content will help you lose weight, also keeping your blood sugar in check. What is next? Well, the snacks that are in containers. A bad snack example would be something like a pretzel or crackers that have been packaged. Why? Because they feature a lot of fast digesting carbs that can quickly elevate your blood sugar levels and often they are manufactured with refined flour. In reality, the carbohydrate content of these items may be higher than what they list on the nutrition label because studies actually show that those snack items include 10% more carbs than they advertise. So it is best to consume a handful of almonds, for example, or a few low-carb vegetables with an ounce of cheese or something when you're hungry in between meals. And if you can, just stop snacks altogether. That would be the best. And the last worst thing you can have is fries. Well, fries are a popular dish. Even if you don't have diabetes, you should stay away from french fries. Why? Carbohydrate content in potatoes is high to begin with, and the carbohydrates can make up up to 35 grams of a, just a medium potato with only 2.5 grams of fiber. So after everything is said and done, though, fries may do way more harm 
than just you're raising your blood sugar. It's been proven that deep frying food creates hazardous substances, which we call them glycation end products and aldehydes at high concentrations. It is possible that these chemicals actually cause a lot of inflammation in your body and enhance the chance of getting sick. Ton of studies actually connected those high intake of fried foods such as french fries to heart disease and a bunch of other cancers. Now, sweet potatoes are the greatest choice if you don't want to forego potatoes completely. So you can bake them and eat them in moderation, but here's a better option parsnips, right? So the parsnips are good. Mashed parsnips look and taste similar to mashed potatoes and have lower amount of carb. Here's the tip of the day. If you're in love with sweet potato, boil them. When you boil as long as possible, you're going to change the chemical structure of that sweet potato, preventing the blood sugar spikes. Yes, boiled sweet potatoes have a low to medium glycemic index as the boiling time is longer. For example, when boiled for 30 minutes, the sweet potatoes have a glycemic index around 46. But when boiled for only 8 minutes, they have a glycemic index of 61. So, huge difference, right? Anyways, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Remember to share, like, and subscribe. Guess what? For sure, see you later. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying this channel so far, and I hope you subscribed already. If you didn't, do it. And if you did, watch this video right there. I think that will help you too.